direct or ceremonies allow me to stand by the protocol that Nafiku has sent. It's a pleasure to be with you again today for our second monetary policy dialogue. I'm delighted that you are able to join us in the auditorium, on our social media, and on NBC TV as well. This engagement is central to the Bank of the Libya's accountability. I believe it's bound to contribute to building trust in the central bank. It is part of our stakeholder management. It serves to educate and provide clarity on monetary policy making in the country. Thank you very much for those of you who sent questions, who sent prayers, who provide all kinds of advice before the NPC meeting. I think it is important that we win the confidence of the Namibians. And winning the hearts and minds of Namibia, Namibians is not a once-off effort. We cannot also take the Bank of Namibia alone. Today's dialogue with you is essential in this endeavor. We are committed and will do everything we can to listen and to respond to concerns of Namibians. Let us turn our attention to the matter at hand. I put a very brief presentation to set the scene and to contextualize the decision, but I've also decided against fancy charts, figures, and tables, because the intention is really not to give a presentation. If you need a full picture of the economy, global economy, domestic economic developments, we can provide you with that. My 10, 15 slide presentation is very much to recap to recap the NPC decision, share with you at a high level what we see as a key drivers of Namibian inflation, how Namibian inflation evolved over the past 20 years, summary and six bullet points, how the global economy is looking at this state and give you our forecast in three bullets, same with the regional economy, domestic economy, and then conclude with. I hope to do this in 10 to 15 minutes, so that we can spend one and a half hour on questions and answers, because that's the more interesting engaging part. We are here to listen and to respond to your concerns. Right, so yesterday's decision was preceded by a comprehensive review of global, regional, and domestic economic developments. We all know that the Monetary Policy Committee members are on your right hand side. That we have decided to increase the repo rate yesterday from 7.25 to 7.75 percent. And many people think, and I need to correct that, that we have a predetermined market level. We are looking at all incoming data, financial and economic data, debated over two days, and then we decide what is appropriate for the country. If you look at the key drivers of Namibia's inflation, those are the ones that we are seeing, and I'm pretty sure most of the economists and analysts in the room are seeing the same. Just today, the Namibian Statistics Agents issued the new inflation figures for the month of May, and inflation edge up is stood at 6.3 from 6.1% in April. And if you look at the key drivers, you can see that food and non-alcoholic beverages, alcoholic beverages, and tobacco, the same taxes are coming through see that clearly. Finishing is a big contributor to co-inflation. It's 
It's not only the head, headline inflation, but the core inflation is also edging out. But most of you are aware of, of that, and I don't have to really go into that. It's quite in interesting that forward inflation is, remains elevated. You know, if you could look at the trends, you can see what's happening on the transport inflation, but the food inflation remains quite key. So there's a clear message for the country what we need to do in terms of food self-sufficiency. <coughs> We've decided just to put up a slide to give you an indication of how our inflation has evolved, with the exception over the past 20 years. With the exception of 2009, inflation has behaved within below 7% over the past 20 years. In 2023, inflation is expected, as I said, to average around 6.1%, driven primarily by transport inflation, brought about by high international oil prices, and exacerbated by a depreciating exchange rate. In 2020, inflation was 2.2% on account of COVID-19 restrictions, affecting transport inflation, coupled with weak economic conditions that result in weakened demand, and that suppressed retail prices. In 2016, inflation rose to 6.7%. The increase in overall inflation was reflected in inflation rates for housing, food and transport. In 2015, inflation was 3.4%, mainly due to the reduction in the inflation rates for the categories housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels. In 2010, inflation was 4.9%. The slowdown in overall inflation was on account of slower increases in international food prices, coupled with strong performance of the Namibia dollar against major currency. The Namibia dollar appreciated on average by about 16.9%, 13.1%, and 13.7% against the euro, the US dollar, and pound respectively. In 2009, inflation reached about 9.5%, resulting from a combination of supply shocks and oil price increases, as well as global recession. And lastly, in 2005, inflation was around 2.3%, on account of weak domestic demand, which contained inflation in the it's important, and most of the analysts and economists in the room, this is familiar to you, but people on, online and people that are watching, most of the people think inflation has been 9, 10, all the time. Some people forgot that inflation it was 1.3.4%, at one stage it was 2.3%, and some people believe this is permanent what we have got currently. So it's quite important that we just set that scene for the debate that we're going to have later. We also look at administered prices because most of the people are telling us in the media that all imported inflation, to a large extent, is imported inflation. But from January 2009 to April 2023, the administered price inflation rate in Namibia exceeded the headline inflation rate, with the former increasing by 124% compared to the consumer price index, which rose by about 102%. So the rise in the price of electricity in Namibia, water supply, Seaway services, refuse collection, few levies, taxes, and margins contributed to the overall administered price increases. Even taxes on data that we've got. Our data is one of the most expensive in the country. So we need to ask the question that's all about headline inflation. So it's not only imported inflation that we're talking about now. 
So we need to ask, is it the NAM power issue? Is it the NAM water issue? Is it local authorities? Is it the FTC? Is it not? Or is it a combination of all? But there is an element of some domestic inflation that we're picking up by just looking at the facts between 2009 and 2023. We thought it's only an Namibian problem to say, why don't we look at what's happening in South Africa? And it is noteworthy that in South Africa, electricity and water were also the items displaying the most rapid price inflation over the period between 2009 and 2023. Then we also look at policy rates in selected African countries, because we saw some of the papers published policy rates and inflation rates in selected countries. And that's how it looks. On the left, the chart presents the policy rate hikes in Namibia and South Africa. And some people were saying, wait a minute, look at the policy rate in Botswana. Why is Botswana at 2.65? Because they kept it unchanged at 2.65% in April. But if you look at the right hand chart, you can see where the inflation of Botswana is. So maybe there is a reason why the monetary policy committee in Botswana, despite an increasing inflation, has decided to keep the rate at 2.65%. So it's, it's, it's important that we also take note of that. So you can see that the work that's being done in Namibia and South Africa has resulted in lower inflation compared to Botswana that has kept the policy rate unchanged. So I don't want to really spend time if we need to engage with do that. So how do we see global developments? I think global goods trades grow slow during the first quarter of 2023, in line with the weekend in global growth. What has happened, the latest figures we got from the World Bank is that global growth is really slowing down so much so that <coughs> The World Bank thinks that the economies, global economy will grow by 2.1% in 2023. Inflation pressure persisted globally, followed by tight monetary policy in advanced economies. Energy and food prices in the US dollar have been on a climbing trend. However, developing economies still face higher prices due to the currency depreciation. It's quite important that we can engage the data just today because it's quite important. Just today, someone called me and said, the US kept the rates unchanged because the inflation dropped from 4.9 to 4.1. Yes, that's the announcement. But what we are all forgetting is to propagate the message. The message underlying that announcement was uh, terminal rate is 55.6, we see two more hikes of 25 bips. And you could see what the market has done and how the market has reacted just today. But we also look at China, and very importantly, that we need to look at growth in China. People become used to growth in China between 8 and 10 percent. I think that world is probably gone. Because there are two things that are happening in the Chinese market. We know what happened to the property market in China, and the property market contributed about one percentage point to the growth in China, and that's gone. We don't think. Currently, you see consumer spending that's contributing to the rebound, but largely that's not coming through of late into the Chinese economy. So between four and a half to six percent growth is probably more what we're going to see in the future from China rather than the 8 to 10 percent of the city. So what's the outlook for the global economy? Global growth projected to slow down in 2023. Most economists in the room will probably have a hear of that. The uncertainty around the recovery of the Chinese economy plus demand for metals. It's quite important for a commodity exporting country like Namibia that we need to understand what's the demand, likely demand for our products. OPEC plus now expected to maintain cuts throughout 2024. If you look at the regional developments, and this is where we need to zoom in, um, South Africa 
load shedding, hampering manufacturing activity, confidence down of businesses and consumers. South Africa's latest inflation numbers came in at about 6.8% for April, and still above the target that the South African government or the Reserve Bank set themselves between 3 and 6 percent. Year to date, the right to share is about 18.5 percent, to an average of about 18.2 from about 15.3 million cent figure last year. So there's a serious depreciation in the round. And if you look at what is that, I look at the announcement of the South African Reserve Bank, the latest announcement, and then on page two, if you go to there, and it actually indicates um, their view of the value of the currency, and they think the rand is undervalued by up to 20%. And that's a function of low growth in South Africa, but very interesting, they are listing some idiosyncratic factors like load shedding, grain listing, and the South Africa Russia relationship with some of the contributing factors. So that's something that we need to watch more closely in the media. The outlook of the South African economy, we know we just missed a uh, recession in the first quarter of uh, negative growth of the session. Negative growth in the first quarter of this year. The ongoing severe power crisis in the country continues to pose outside risk of inflation outlook. Possible risk of sanctions in the South African economy could have impact for the random media dollar exchange plan. Gross domestic product expected to remain subdued in the second quarter of this year. <clears throat> if you look at our own economy, there's some positive momentum for the first four months of this year. I'm going to put a chart, but I'll put only one chart for you for today, and just to make that point, because Many people are asking, <clears throat> you see some positive momentum in the Namibian economy, where is this coming from? So maybe you can give some indication where that is coming from. Private sector credit extension is quite worrisome, subdued in Namibia. It's dropped from about 3.1% to about 2.6%. And if you unpack that, the problem is more on business credit side rather than on the household because the household is holding up pretty well. At the end of May 2023, the stock of international reserves stood at 50.6 billion, translating into an import cover of after three months. Our view of the Namibian economy in terms of outlook is growth is projected to slow down from 4.6 to about 3% in 2023 as a result of the expected slower growth in primary shipping industries. Private sector credit extension growth expected to remain constrained in 2023. Industrial domestic growth uh, predominantly tight monetary conditions around the world to tame inflation, water supply interruptions affecting coastal towns especially uranium mines and the looming drought in a sizable number of areas in our country. So where is growth coming? What, what, what did you see in the first four months of that? This was positive momentum throughout all sectors with the exception of the construction sector. And even within the construction sector, you could see some pickup in government construction for the first time because of the development budget of, of the government is coming through and the problem remains still in private sector construction. But that's what we've seen in terms of the numbers that we have got for the first four months of this year. We can provide some detail, but I don't want to go. We can go into the primary sector and take you through that. Let us have a debate later on. That's not the purpose today. So my second last slide is what are the top risks that we are seeing globally and regionally? I think inflation remains sticky. And we could see some recession in some countries. 
exist population across the globe. There is escalation of geopolitics and weaponization of economic policies that could disrupt financial markets. And the competition and the tension between the two largest economies in the world actually get into a point where we need to start taking cognizance of the potential impact thereof. If you look closer to South Africa, I think the electricity challenges remain. The issue that you also need to watch is what we heard just today that US lawmakers is asking for some support of measures against the South African government because those could have implications for the RAND, Namibia dollar exchange rate, it could be inflationary in our part of the world. Alright, what we see finally is risk in Namibia. The slug is global economic output is negative. For Namibia's commodity demand and export revenue. The uncertainty of Chinese economy plus the demand for Namibian native commodities. The higher cost of key import items given the expected depreciation of our currency versus many trading partner currencies. High global interest rates that will tighten financial conditions with the supply of questions along the coast and the looming drought. Those are what we see as the key risks to the Dominican economy. With that, let me stop here. And I deliberately decided not to, to have charts with you today, but we can have a more. We would like to engage with you so that you can understand where we are coming from. So we get a sense, or I get a sense, the more you explain, the more we are not understood. So we need to spend time explaining that. Thank you very much for listening.